Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here, as always, with Tom Orr. Tom, how is it going? My fancy new Buckeye Scoop hoodie just came in, just got here in the mail, just moments before we hit record. I was promised it would get here before the Michigan game, and it made it with 351 days to spare. So <laughs> that's service. I mean, that's that is that is fantastic service. Shout out to Kirk Barton and the rest of the Buckeye Scoop merch team. Yeah, a great job bringing up the Michigan game again, Tom. I thought we were past that. We we're moving on. But no, one last dagger into the hearts of everybody. Uh, but it's it's not like people are going to be watching football on Saturday and being like, you know, nothing is missing. Everything seems totally fine right now. This is what a wonderful day. I was, you know, like when you're, you walk into a room, and you're like, why did I walk into this room? Like, there's there's going to be no, none of that. Like, why did I turn this TV on? No, the Michigan game is missing. And, uh, but, it is what it is at this point, Tom. But as as we know, Ohio State was going to win. So, are you really missing anything? I mean, I I would like to go watch some football in person. Does that count? That, uh, yes, that does count. And especially there's, it, it would have been very different. We don't need to go into this, but like my favorite thing every year is the Michigan game, and maybe my second favorite thing every year is the morning of. Granted, it's tough to wake up that early, but just. Being around the, whichever stadium, the, the, you know, walking through the tailgates um, from uh, Tunnel Park Garage and the home games and just driving through campus or the energy. And that would have been very, very different. But then once you're up in the press box, then, then it's, you still see the colors of the uniforms. And I'm sure it would have been just as real and legitimate at that point, especially as Ohio State is putting 60-some points up per usual. I I always enjoy our drive to the game where whatever we have decided is likely going to happen during the game, during the drive to the game that morning, we always (laughs) seem to start talking ourselves into, but wouldn't it be crazy if the other thing happened? Like if, if we're driving to the game thinking Michigan's going to win, it's like, boy, it would be really wild if Ohio State pulled this out. And then last year, I remember driving up to Ann Arbor and it's like, yeah, yes, Ohio State won. And yes, we have been pretty confident Ohio State will win all week. But man, wouldn't it just be the craziest thing if Michigan won? And you start talking yourself into it. And then, you know, you just, it, it is always, uh, you know, as an event that is a very uh, A or B, either yes or no, this team wins or this team loses. And that will be what defines, you know, basically the, uh, the mood around the Woody Hayes Athletic Center for much of the next 12 months. That is, uh, it's always, it's always like, you know, you've seen enough crazy stuff happen that you could always talk yourself into what if another crazy thing happened today? That's always, that's always a fun few hours on Saturday morning before the game. Especially when Michigan scores early or scores late in the first half and and the the score is close and you're like, I knew it. I said it. (laughs) Remember on the drive, I said it. And then of course, 16 touchdowns later. And it's like, well, maybe it wasn't that close, but at one time it was. Uh, so that that's uh, uh, Tom. There's plenty of time to talk about Michigan over the next 351 days. Thank you very much. So we'll do that then. Right now, what we wanted to talk about today is the story that Pete Thamel of Yahoo Sports put out on Thursday about the Rose Bowl possibly being moved in terms of venues, and the Rose Bowl director being like, "Oh, bye." I haven't heard any of this. I, nobody said anything to me. <laughs> and it's like, well, it's probably because you're going to be the last person to find out when they're like, you know what? You know, we're not going to be able to, we're not going to have, have a semifinal game here in your stadium. And the reason why there is concern is not because uh, you can't play football in, in California. You can, but you know, it's the Jurassic park thing. Yeah. The scientists, never thought about they always thought about what they could do not about what they should do and here yes you can play football in california in the rose bowl but there can be no fans there can be no family most especially like the 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 parents can't see their kids play and so then it becomes well yes you can play there tom but should you I was worried you were going to say there was a dinosaur problem in Pasadena. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I hadn't heard anything yeah, about this. No, no. Refresh Twitter. You'll see <laughs> carnage everywhere. It's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is one of these things where you will not find anyone who gets as schmoopy about the Rose Bowl as I do. 
I, I absolutely love the Rose Bowl. I look forward to the Rose Bowl. If Ohio State is not in the college football playoff, I always hope that they go to the Rose Bowl so that I can go to the Rose Bowl. It is a game. I mean, I talked on Thursday's show about the fact that you should go do an Army-Navy game at some point if you have not done an Army-Navy game, if you are a college football fan. If you are a college football fan, you should go to the Rose Bowl sometime. You should f- pick, pick a year that Ohio State goes, or if you're not an Ohio State fan, just pick a year and go. And go see the parade, and it's all a little hokey, and it's all a little, you know, whatever. But it's, it is very hard to be in that stadium and not get a little... Uh, you know, wistful about the January 1st when you were a child and the snow is blowing outside and then the TV comes on and it's all so green and colorful and lush and wonderful. And then the sun sets in the third quarter and yada, yada, yada. I mean, you, it's, this is a little like uh, Augusta National Golf Club where every sports writer in America has written some like love letter to the Rose Bowl about how wonderful it is. And it's like, yes, this is like, this is a cliched old trope but it's because everyone who goes there has the same reaction, which is, oh, they should make the whole college football season out of this one day in this one stadium. It's just so perfect. So no one loves the Rose Bowl more than I do. But, you know, at the same time, if you are the parent of a player who is going to be in the college football playoff this year, you want to go see your kid. You know, I mean, I love the Rose Bowl. I also love my children. Some might say I love my children more than the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Don't tell the Rose Bowl, but it's true. But it, it's just, you just, you have to think of, think of others at times. And if it is not possible to have fans there, like even an extremely limited number of fans like Ohio State has for their games, like let, let's do right by people and, and find a way to make it happen that people can go watch their kids play in, you know, one of the biggest games of their lives that they've been working 15, 20 years to get to. Well, and this, the Michigan game would have been an opportunity for parents and family members to watch Ohio State, watch their Buckeye sons uh, play for the first time in what, a month? Over a month. And then, of course, that game didn't happen. But the, I mean, remember when it would have been the 2014 playoffs where family members had to pay their way? And Urban Meyer was like, you know what, let's do something about that. And and now the bowls, the, the the playoffs pay for, I believe, two members, two family members to travel, you know, with, with plane tickets and game tickets and hotel. And, and so it, it's important to have family there. And now that's it's it's not if it's in the Rose Bowl, the Rose Bowl has even gone to like the state and the city and hey, hey, can we have parents and they're like, no, you, no, stop asking. You're not getting it. Just leave us alone. And now, now you're, you're blocked. And so there is that to consider. This is, I mean, look at Boston College opting out of a bowl game entirely, not like LSU, but Boston College having a, a season where they got, they've got a lot to be proud of. And they're just like, it, it's, it's too much right now. We're, we're, we, we don't need a bowl game. I don't know that the most important part about a bowl game this year would just be the extra practice time but there's so much that goes into just the all of the daily stuff of uh the practicing and and the testing and the protocols it's it's a lot and if you aren't one of the few teams with a like a top end end goal it's it's not worth it and you know, Jeff Halfley at Boston College viewing his team's mental health as more important than getting 15 more practices or 20 more practices out of them. You know, I think that is commendable. And then you just hit refresh next year and and try to start over and make the most out of what this year was. As Ryan Day keeps talking about, like I truly believe what everybody is going through this year, what we're going through this year, will benefit the players down the road. It may be 10 years, maybe 20 years, but you'll be able to use this this ordeal and this adversity that that you've gone through. But Tom, when you're talking about thinking of other people, David Eads, the executive director of the Rose Bowl, is thinking about other people when he wants the Rose Bowl to stay in Pasadena and have everybody have a game there because he says that uh, most of America, quote unquote, most of America will, will want to see the game and, and the sun setting, the San Gabriel Mountains. You can see them behind me if you're watching on YouTube. Tom is right. It is awesome to be there and it is special and you, it feels special while you're there. 
But he says, uh, it says uh, it would go a long ways towards helping the American psyche in a very dark time to have the Rose Bowl played in the Rose Bowl on uh, television. And yeah, Tom, see, he's thinking of uh, America. He's not just thinking of these, these players and their, their needy parents. He's thinking about you and me and Joe down on the corner and Mary at the IGA. He's thinking of them. He's, he's got everybody in mind and, and you're being selfish, Tom, and maybe me, me as well by thinking of the players and it, this is their job, Tom. It, it is their job. This is, they are essential workers, they're not employees, <laughs> but they're essential workers. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, this is one of those things where like, yes, I, it would be great. And, and everyone looks forward to that every new year's day. And what a wonderful, I mean, we, we talked when Ohio state was talking about like starting some kind of a January season way back in the summer, we talked about how, you know, if, if you kick off the season and you do it in the Rose bowl on January 1st, and what a, what a powerful symbol that would be about the new start of the new season or something, you know, the new, the new year and a dawning of a new, like whatever, like, you know, what's more important than symbolism, uh, parents, families, <laughs> like I, I'm going to even propose a wonderful, uh, compromise here uh. where we just have a live stream of the Rose bowl from like the top of the press box shooting towards the San Gabriel mountains. And we just live stream that in the corner of the actual Rose bowl broadcast, or they put that on one of the, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the channels on the ESPN multiplex thing where they have the, you know, the Homer broadcast and the, uh, uh, the flying camera broadcast. And they have the coaches film room broadcast, like do the Pasadena sunset broadcast. Do that every day. I don't care. I'd watch that every day. Like I'd throw that up on a monitor in my office and like, sure. Like I, I would be perfectly fine with that. And and I do. I really, really, truly, unironically enjoy it and love it. But there are more important things than sunsets every once in a while. What they could do is if they move the venue, just drape all of the seats in the new venue in green screen and have the parents wear and family members wear green. And then the broadcast can just superimpose like last year's Rose Bowl crowd. And then you, you'll just have that in uh it, it wouldn't be Jerry world, but somewhere just and make sure everybody wears green. And then you can just project the, uh, the Rose Bowl over top of it. A lot of Oregon and Wisconsin fans at this Ohio state, Notre Dame semifinal for some reason, not sure why, not sure what's going on, but uh, a lot of good, good for them that they got into the spirit of the event. Well, you can crank up the contrast or something like that, or the brightness and, and, and tra- change the green to a red. It's it's very. I'm sure they have Photoshop, or they could just go to the game two years ago and, and get the Ohio State Washington footage. There you go. There you go. So see, look look at you solving problems. Thank you. And that's and all people, I'm trying to do. And people say you can't do anything. Right. I people, don't say that. Of course, people no, do. No, I get the messages. Thank you. Um, the the idea that uh, the and I rip on the Rose Bowl sometimes just because it is so staunch and doesn't like to change but it does continue to change and i was talking to our buddy matt Connolly from uh at the state uh who covers clemson this was two or three weeks ago we're like are they really going to make us meeting us meeting the media like clemson and ohio state media go out to california to play a game between ohio state and clemson it's like does that does that make any sense to do that and that's just sending media out there let alone the two teams that are also playing and it, it really doesn't. And, and it's, a, it's a lot for uh, these bowl games are 10. They are events, but now they are not. They are just games. And so it doesn't make any sense to send a team from Ohio and a team from, I don't know what state Clemson is in. I think it's like West Virginia. <laughs> That's just a shout at the, the people from Clemson and South Carolina because uh, they don't like Ohioans in the South mm-hmm. Carolina because too many Ohioans go to Myrtle Beach. So sue us. You know, mm-hmm. am I wrong? Sue us. But to send all of us out west for a game, albeit a playoff game, is it, it doesn't make as much sense as it once did. And there's, I mean, everything for media is virtual. Everything for players is, you're getting out there as late as possible. You are trying to shrink this entire event. So if you're shrinking the event, why not shrink the geography of it as well? 
that's that's my thought and uh it, it's it's a long way to go for one game and then leave as soon as you can like get there as late as you can leave as soon as you can it's like people i mean it's like a a a, a day at work at the office you get there as close to uh your lateness as you can and you leave as soon as you can and it's certainly not an event this this has gone from a what build games typically are which is some kind of like a combination of a vacation and a fun trip and an adventure to we're going somewhere to put something on tv for a few hours like we're going somewhere to make a tv show for a few yes. hours and that's it and that's essentially what the trip is like the, there's obviously quite a bit of stakes in terms of the on-field event but you're not doing the disneyland trip this year if you go out to the rose bowl you're not doing you know the the beach day you're not doing the bowling party like whatever all these different different bowls do the media is not going to get to do their top golf outing like we did last year i mean this is i mean i'll get emotional (laughs) yeah it's and and if if they could go across the country and the parents could all be there like yeah I would be fine with going all the way across the country. That's fine. Even if it is two East Coast teams going all the way across the country, that's fine too. But this this made sense to do a long time ago. This made, I mean, Ross Fulton brought up the idea, I don't know, two months ago. Like, I don't think they're going to be able to have anyone in the stadium because Ross lives in California and he's, you know, pretty, pretty up on what the restrictions are there right now. And it was like, okay, so are they going to move the Rose Bowl? And it made a lot of sense to move the Rose Bowl. And they didn't do it. And they didn't do it. And they didn't do it. And here we are on December, what, 11th. And it's like, oh, hey, maybe they should move the Rose Bowl. Like literally yesterday, literally yesterday, someone on Twitter, uh, at Van Gogh underscore zero, one of our good buddies, Matty Ice, uh, who's one of our uh, show listeners and frequent correspondents on our uh, Q&A shows, he uh, brought up the idea, like, shouldn't they just move this to Indianapolis or something? And I said, I, d- I think it's too late. Like, I think if they w- if that was actually going to happen, it would have happened already. I mean, the, the game is less than three weeks away. Like, you, there's a bunch of logistical stuff you get you have to get figured out. I, I think they would have had to do that already. And then, of course, like three hours later, Pete Dammel comes out and is like, yeah, they're thinking about moving the Rose Bowl. It's like, <laughs> all right, we're where was this four hours ago? So I don't look like an idiot. And where was this two months ago when you probably should have started thinking about this? Like, I mean, this is, this is all stuff that, that probably should have been, you know, and, and we don't know exactly how far along those conversations are. I mean, this, this may be way down the road and this is just the first anyone's hearing of it, but yeah, I mean, moving it to somewhere like Indianapolis would make, make a lot of sense. Just, you know, you have all this, all the stuff down downtown. There's not like the hotel rooms are all gonna be booked up. I mean, it's it's like that's fine if you can do it there, and then at least families can go see the games. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think the problem with canceling something so far in advance is you're still trying to get things to work out at the original location, and it's like, well, California is telling me no, we can't get the parents, but let me give me another week. You know, let me let me work. Maybe things will relax and we're all just waiting for regulations to relax and things like that. But right now with an uptick, I, I don't see that happening. And so it, it makes so much sense to send the game somewhere else. And the fact that there are fewer logistics involved helps. You don't have to worry about fans in terms in, in, in those numbers. You don't have to worry about 80,000 fans. You might have to worry about 5,000 and any city that has a stadium, the size of whatever would be required would have, Plenty of hotel space. I mean, right now, you can get hotels in Indianapolis for eight dollars and uh, some cardboard. Yeah. Literally, that's not true. That's not true. How much did we pay? Sixty nine dollars. This is a nice price. Free parking. Uh, I mean, that's right downtown. So, uh, but that that's a fancy place. You know, that's that's a that's not a, a, a hostel like you know some people like to stay in the Indianapolis hostel seems. The Rose Bowl presented by Eli Roth. Yes, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it's like, this is all doable at this point. It's just, I was, I was very surprised that, that like, that was the first we were hearing about it because it, I mean, this has seemed like a very obvious issue. And again, like maybe, maybe they've been laying the groundwork on this for quite a while, but you know, I mean, and then the question is like, okay, where do they do it? If they can't do it in California, where do they do it? Cause you have teams in California that have moved out like uh, Stanford, went and was like practicing in the state of Washington because they couldn't practice. They couldn't practice at Stanford. They had to go out of state to go practice. So 
you know, the question then is where, I know you kind of looked up some different venues that were possibilities that, you know, could they do it at the Fiesta Bowl site? Could they do the Cotton Bowl site? Like, so what, what looks like it might actually be a viable option for the Rose Bowl if they can't play it in Pasadena? Well, and it just depends on how quickly you can turn things around as well, because I know Jerry World has been talked about in terms, in, in the article at least, and that's at t Stadium in Arlington. They have the Cotton Bowl two days before the Wednesday, on the, that Wednesday, which I think that's enough time to to get things flipped around. Indianapolis would would work as well. There's a Colts game on the third, so there's there's another two day turnaround. So that is a possibility. We know how much the Southern teams like to play in Atlanta, if at all possible. That would not be a possibility because of the Peach Bowl going on that day. Um, or on, uh, I think that's on the first, right? I'm looking here. I thought it was. Maybe it's on the 31st. But uh, where did it go, Tom? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, the Peach Bowl. Way, yeah. One, one, yeah, di- one day in any right direction. There. One day in any direction is an issue. Two days in any direction yeah. is not an issue at all. Because yeah. you're going to want to have a walkthrough probably the mm-hmm. day before. So you want to have a day beforehand in order to get the thing done we have been in plenty of stadiums where we've been recording our post-game instant reaction show down in jerry world at yes. lucas oil i mean like some of the facilities we're talking about here we're recording our post-game instant reaction show and they're already like rolling up the field turf and shipping it off and getting it ready for an nfl game the next day two days later yeah. i mean that's they can turn these facilities and those are those are facilities you're turning like when you have had just had sixty thousand people in the stands so they're, you know, leaf blowing out all the old boxes of popcorn and all that stuff. And I mean, it's all the wonderful audio magic that makes this our post-game instant reaction shows what they yes. are. <laughs> but it also, in this one particular case, also illustrates the fact that, yes, they can turn it. Like, and it, Indianapolis, in a lot of ways, makes a lot of sense to me because you don't necessarily need to have like an NFL team do a walk through the day before, day before a game the way a college team is going to want to go into the stadium, look around and all that kind of stuff the day before a game. You would rather probably have the nfl game after rather than trying to turn it from a game like two days before or a day before so there are a lot of ways indianapolis makes a lot of sense not least of which is then we can just drive and it'll take three hours that'll be great it would be perfect Uh, unfortunately you know i was i was i was thinking like well what about legion field in birmingham but they've got the birmingham bowl on on the first so you know that would have been that would have been nice that would have been a a dream because we've we've never gotten to cover anything in Birmingham, so that would have been nice. But really, you're, you're right, Tom, because all they're really doing is changing some paint, like taking something off and putting something on. There, there's not a lot of work that needs to go on. It's not like they're putting ice out on the field when Ohio State goes from basketball to hockey back to basketball. That it, it would seem a lot easier to do, and and we know because shoot, Jerry World, as soon as that game is over, they start taking care of the end zones and, and getting all of that stuff ready. And the other thing is like all of the normal places you would go for bowl games, Orlando, Jacksonville, those are all you know, booked on the first or the second as well. So yeah, Dallas, Indianapolis, uh, we had mentioned, uh, didn't we talk about maybe uh, somewhere in between like Dollywood, I think was maybe, maybe we mentioned between, you know, like Clemson and, and Ohio state somewhere in there. It just it makes so much sense to move it somewhere closer, which means it's it's not going to happen. How much like how much time do they need? The fact that they're talking about it tells me that they can still get it done within a couple weeks' notice. Again, because the hotels and the tickets aren't aren't the issue, and everything right now can be done so much quicker because it's it's a smaller thing that you're moving even. Knowing that it is a playoff game, it's still just a game. It's pretty uh, cocooned in terms of there's not a lot around it. And so it makes things easier to move. I just wonder at what point it becomes a non-entity, like it can't happen. And so uh, it is interesting to me that the talks are going on and that people are sharing concerns because sharing the concern is the first step in in getting things moved. And the fact that this is out there now is, is it. Is it a bit of a trial balloon that schools or administrators or like Gene Smith or Clemson's AD or whomever is throwing out there that, hey, you know, this 
and trying to get it on their side. Like, yeah, it, it is stupid to send everybody out to California and the parents can't watch them when we know Ohio State played at Notre Dame basketball wise. Family got to be in the, in the stadium, in the, in the arena for that. So Indiana has some different rules. And certainly, I don't know that anybody is, is as strict as California right now. And it just makes so much sense, which is why I, uh, I don't know, 35, 65 that it gets changed. I, I'm thinking it's actually more likely that it gets changed. And Indianapolis makes so much sense to me because you've just, you know, if you're playing it on January 1st, they will have just hosted the Big Ten championship game 12 days before that where you're going to have teams in hotels downtown, you know, you, you will have had all gone through all of the logistics of here's what it means to have a, yeah. a, you know, two college football teams in your hotel to keep them quarantined, keep them safe, you know, not have, not have uh, exposure to outside people and have everything kind of probably locked down. I mean, Ohio state has generally had like the whole hotel to themselves. I don't know if they'll do that again, this, this, uh, you know, for this case, but, they will have just gone through all of this stuff. There will not be any question like what can Indianapolis handle a large college football event right now with all these circumstances, like within a two week span, like, yes, they will have just done it and they will have probably learned a little bit from whatever the first one was and can do it a little bit better the second time. And then here's another thing that's worth thinking about the college football national championship game next year is in Indianapolis. Like this would be a perfect trial run for Indianapolis hosting a, major you know i mean indianapolis hosts lots of major college football events every year they do one but you know this would be an, a great chance that obviously the people who run the college football playoff committee think that indianapolis is a place that is perfectly capable of handling this kind of thing so and they will have just handled one 11 days earlier so i mean that and and you don't have anything where it's like oh well now you get a bump you know bump some other college football bowl game out of there like it just it's such a clean easy solution and when you've got Notre Dame, when you've got Ohio State, those are two of the two, four teams projected to make the field. I mean, you could potentially have one or two teams like super close. I mean, really like, I mean, if you're on an airplane from Columbus to Indianapolis, like you barely get up. I don't know if you even get up to cruising altitude. You might just kind of be up to 10,000 feet, like be able to turn on your cell phone and then immediately have to turn your cell phone back off and you come back down. Like it just, it, it, it makes so much sense that I would I would be a little bit surprised. Like this is this is one of the things that if they do decide to move it from the actual Rose Bowl, this is such an easy decision that I would be kind of surprised if it ended up anywhere else. Yeah, and the fact that it is an experienced venue with experienced people who all have also experienced doing it in a pandemic. And Tom, I don't want to throw any shade at the Rose Bowl. I was not impressed when we were there in terms of the way they treated the media, their ex expectations of the media or for the media. Uh, so there is that, although numbers would certainly be reduced and, and maybe to a, a point where they would be able to handle us. But if we're just talking about the way a Rose Bowl or the way a bowl game can handle the, the Ohio State media, I, I, was not, I was not all that impressed with the Rose Bowl. Uh, you know, Cotton Bowl was great. Fiesta Bowl is, has been up and down for me. Uh, and, and this isn't just about free beer and free food. It is also about what time that stuff starts. And, <laughs> and frankly, starting free beer at 6 p.m. Uh, at the Rose Bowl or 4 p.m., whatever it was, it's just not early enough. And uh, I, I don't know that I'll ever forgive them. I just remember you rattling on the doors of the, what they temporarily called granddad's lounge <laughs> at two o'clock it's five o'clock somewhere and that place is where i'm from open up you monsters yes that i remember it as clear as day yes absolutely yeah and, and uh this is this is uh this is one of these things that i'm not sure our listeners necessarily care or about or can relate to but uh yes i'm sure they can all relate to it <laughs> Or at least yeah. picture themselves. You know, you know the the like the the picture of like the kids or the dogs just like licking windows. You know, it's like really just <laughs> getting in there and like that. Yeah, that was me at two p.m. But one thing that is actually kind of an interesting question about this is: Would if they do it in Indianapolis, would they be able to bring in fans? Because the Colts have had fans in their games. The Big Ten Championship game is not allowing fans in. So 
At that point, I assume that the answer is like, this is not a health department decision. This is a organizational decision. So let's just hypothetically say that this plays out where Notre Dame beats, uh, you, you know, Notre Dame gets in, Ohio State gets in, and it's an Ohio State Notre Dame uh, Rose Bowl played in Indianapolis, and they have 5,000 tickets available. Tony, what is Jeez. the get in price? on uh StubHub or whatever your uh, scalping site of choice I, is I, I i think the question is it's going to start with it's going to be four digits and the question yeah. is what digit does that first what's the first number in that number? I, i'm thinking depending on because if they spread everybody out rather than just have because they should be able to spread everybody out as opposed to how, how ohio stadium does it where it's like you people sit in this section you people sit mm -hmm. in that section and that's the only stuff we're doing because we don't want to claim the entire thing if you spread it out, I don't know, 1500 for nosebleeds. I mean, at, at least, yeah. I mean, if, if you're, if you're only getting I mean, 5,000 people in there, think about how Ohio state fans yes. mob that stadium for a typical game, a typical big 10 championship yeah. game where it's like, yes, Ohio state does this every year and they're playing Northwestern or they're playing Wisconsin. And you've seen them play these teams before and you've seen them win this game before, and you're probably saving your money for the playoff game. Well, okay. Now this is the semifinal game. So Another good question would be like, what are you willing to pay? Like the, the Buckeye fans who I go to every game, it's mm -hmm. like, well, are you, is, is 5,000 a ticket going to keep you home or, you know, or is that just you know, whatever it yeah. takes, I'm going to go watch the playoffs against Notre Dame. Yeah. And, and, and I, I think there's a, you know, I mean, I think the way the school is going to distribute those tickets is they're going to go to a lot of people who have written large checks even before these checks are written. So that's a lot of them are going to go to them. Yeah, you would you would hope that you'd be able to let, I don't know, a hundred students from each school in or something like that. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe this is me me and my. Uh, <laughs> this is maybe, maybe this is me, me being charitable with other people's money. But it would be cool if other people got you know if students some students got to go to the game. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, I, I, I you could you could tell me the get in price for that between Notre Dame and Ohio State. Those two fan bases, drivable game. Yeah. playoff semifinal because well, you, you, you don't have to Rose worry about the, the, the airfare so you just factor that right. into the ticket right. price as well right i mean i think there's probably a lot of, i think there's a lot of people who probably pay five thousand dollars for a rose bowl trip when you're flying you know if you're flying four people yeah. across the country and staying in a hotel for seven days Jeez. and i mean like I, you could you could tell me the get-in price for that game was 3500 bucks and i wouldn't i wouldn't go are you sure like it, ab, if there's right. five thousand people in there Absolutely, I could see that happening. Yeah, because the Rose Bowl trip is is very, very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have all of the other expenses, then you know what? Typical Rose Bowl trip, we'll just funnel all of this into getting tickets and find a cheap place to play, a cheap place to stay, and or just go home after the game. Yeah, you got to remember that Rose Bowl tickets uh, trip is expensive because you got to fly all the way across the country, and you, you're, if you're curd, you have to buy your own beer before six o'clock. I mean, this is <laughs> this adds up. I mean, this is. That, that Miller High Life is expensive, and <laughs> but but one of my favorite stories, and and we 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 don't have to go too far into it, but from the Rose Bowl, is is sending uh, Andy the intern to a carryout to bring back a whole bunch of forties so that we could drink them in the bar because the bar wasn't serving us yet, and then the hotel manager is like, "It's okay that you're doing this now, but when we open, do you mind if we like throw away your empties?" And it's like, "Get away from us! We're media." Who do you think you are? Let me drink my 40 at peace. We wouldn't be doing this if you, you open at a reasonable hour. We tip. And I would. I tipped. I didn't tip Andy on the, uh, on the, on the trip to get the 40s, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. It's an intern. It, yeah, he, he's an intern that would violate his, uh, his, his amateurism. <laughs> so you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, this, this is going to be so interesting to see because I, I really do think there are going to be so many people where I mean we've we've had that sense where we're at games where it's like this is like literally history right here yeah. in front of us not like I mean like every Ohio State game is like something of some kind of a historical event to some degree or another but this is like people 100 years from now are going to be talking about this crazy season where this you know there were what 600 people in the stadium for the Indiana game there are a lot of Ohio State fans who have not gotten to do that this year and who I'm sure are would really, really love to be a part of this crazy, bizarre season in any form. I mean, what would the get-in price have been for the Michigan game if they had 5,000 tickets for the Michigan game? I mean, you, you, would, you would have made 2,000 
dollar tickets for the Michigan game where Ohio State's favored by 30 points. This is a playoff game where with another fan base who yeah. actually would want to be there. I mean, the number in my head keeps going up. I think I'm up to thousand dollars. Like fifteen hundred. Like, are you sure that's that's very low? Fifteen hundred is very low because I, I totally forgot about the no airfare, no L.A. hotels. No, I mean just parking alone is going to be like fifty bucks a day in L.A. or in that area, and so you can almost stay in Indianapolis for fifty bucks a day right now, which is, you know, or you can stay for free because there's all kinds of just rest areas. You know, you don't need to. <laughs> You don't need comfort when you've sent, sunk all of your money into to a football ticket, and man, that would be that would be nice if they did that, and people actually got to go to the game, and families got to go to the games, and just see something that they've, they've not been experiencing and they've been missing, and so that would be good for everybody involved. Uh, and, and for those who think well, you can't move the Rose Bowl, it's never been done before, done before. Tom, that's actually not true. That is actually not true. The Rose Bowl was moved in 1942. January 1942 it was moved to Durham, North Carolina. Okay, mm-hmm. you you can you can all decide at home which part of this sentence is the weirdest. The 1942 Rose Bowl played in Durham, North Carolina, featured Oregon State and the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> That's a sentence. And do you know how Duke how Oregon State got there? Uh, I think they took a train. Yes, they did take a train. Yes, and. Uh, and, and the reason was that was less than a month after Pearl Harbor. So there were no big events going on on the West Coast. So they moved it to moved it to Durham, North Carolina, because that is pretty far from the West Coast. And it is not like any kind of like unprecedented stuff like that isn't happening right now. This weekend, Army and Navy are playing and they're playing at West Point. And it is the first time they're playing that game on campus instead of in a neutral site since 1943, which was also during World War II. So this is one of these things where yeah, a bunch of weird stuff's happening this year. This is you you are living through a weird part of history. And, you know, I mean, this is fortunately, this is not World War II. Things could be worse. We're not in World War II. So, you know, if if the price of a Rose Bowl happening this year and people getting to go watch it in person is it happens in Indianapolis instead of Pasadena, that's fine. I'm not okay with Arlington, but I'm fine with Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. I- this makes sense. The most sense is to change something to make things easier. And this has been a hard time for everybody. So a little bit of easiness wouldn't be a bad thing, even though yes, the poor director of the Rose bowl would have lost his game. And you know, everybody loses, has lost something. The Rose bowl, losing the the game, the Miami, the national championship game is going to have, uh, not the great big crowd. It's not going to have, it's not the windfall that everybody thought it would be. Everybody is missing out this year in some, some form or fashion in terms of the, the football stuff. So it's not like they're alone. It's like, Oh, why did this only happen to us? Like, <laughs> oh, just slow down. We'll see a sunset. You've got 365 of them a year, sometimes 366. It'll be okay. So uh, hopefully, hopefully the smart people get together and uh, come up with the best decision as as we know college football pe- the, the smartest people in the world run college football they decide who gets to be in the playoffs they decide who are the top 25 teams tom are, is that is that doubt or stink guy that, that i'm seeing from you all of the above I have two words for you citation needed <laughs> yeah that's that's true so uh that'll I think that'll do it, Tom. Are we are we done? Are you good for the week? You have any uh, morning? You have, what's up? What's up? What's going on with the morning scoop on Saturday? Mm. Well, as per tradition, we are not. We you know there's there's a lot uh, in America that's in sort of turmoil and tumult right now. So we felt it was very important to stick with our tradition for the psyche of America and not have a morning scoop on Saturday. So we'll we'll see you Monday, but. Uh, had uh, had Jared from the Sloopcast on on Friday's morning scoop. I listened. Got to, preview, got to preview this weekend's games. Got to talk a little bit about uh, Ohio State's potential playoff uh, opponents and who might be a decent matchup, who might be more of a problematic matchup for Ohio State. Who you know where where they might play, who they might play, all of that. So you can find uh, the morning scoop on all your podcast platforms of choice. Just search morning scoop or Buckeye scoop to find it there. Also, I will give uh, Alex Gleitman a plug. He had a dynamite Jeez. around the oval podcast where he had pete thamel whose work we were just talking about so he had pete thamel on oh and also we had adam rittenberg from espn who's their big 10 guy 
it was like, geez, Alex, like stop running up the score on the rest of us. Like <laughs> I keep doing shows with Gerd and you're like, Oh, I'm going to have Pete Thamel and Adam Rittenberg. Like jerk. But uh, yes, that's, that's worth a listen. Uh, Bill Green and, um, and uh, Mark Givler did their gives in the bank podcast today and did uh, told some old Ohio state, Michigan recruiting stories. So like the story behind the Kyle Kalis recruitment, there was a bunch of stuff that I, I had not heard about that. That was really interesting. Um, and then they also told one more. I'm forgetting which one it Zach was. Harrison. Oh, no, Zach Harrison. Yeah, it was Zach Harrison. I it was another yet, another but... good one. Yeah, another good one. Yeah. So uh, you can find all of those shows. Just search Buckeye Scoop. We have a ton of great podcasts on uh, on our platform. And if you're listening to this, that means you're probably into podcasts. So yeah. it might be might be worth checking out. Sloopcast guys are uh, previewing the. Uh, sorry, my my cat is howling in the background. <laughs> I apologize if you hear that. Previewing a signing day, which is Wednesday. Um, I had somebody on Twitter ask, "Hey, are you guys are you and Tom going to be doing a, a pregame show tomorrow on Saturday? Just and maybe talking about Northwestern?" And it's like, "No, there, there's time. There's time for that. We we won't do it this week. Maybe maybe next week though, Tom." I think we started. Didn't we start doing podcasts this week on Sunday night? So isn't this our sixth Buckeye oh, Weekly gosh. for the week? Even though there's not a Michigan game, feels like. This is this is one of those weeks where it was like I started thinking and I was like, have I done like eleven podcasts this week between Michigan Morning Scoop and Buckeye Weekly? That seems like a lot. You mentioned Alex. I, I, it would have been like Thursday morning. I'm driving in the car and he texts me. He's like, "Hey, we're trying to get Adam Rittenberg on, uh, but if I can't, can you come on?" And of course, I have the fallback guy for everybody. <laughs> it's like, yes, I will save your bacon if you need it, and then. Later on, he's like, hey, I don't need you. I've got Thamel and Rittenberg. I'm like, gee whiz. <laughs> and then last night, I was like, hey, if I can't get Jared, can you come on the morning scoop? And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, you know, you, you got to be versatile to be the backup for anybody. Like, I, I, can, I can catch. I can go play first base. I can do whatever you need. Uh, throw me in right field a little bit. And, uh, you know, whatever I'm here, it's not, I'm not going anywhere. As far as I know, Mark and Kirk may tell me differently, but at least we'll still have this podcast. Right, Tom? As far as you know, <laughs> <laughs> till, till Pete Thamel reports otherwise. Yes. As far as I know, we're still going to be doing a podcast about the Rose Bowl in California. All right. That'll do it. We've done enough, Tom. Thank you all for, for listening. Make sure to check out BuckeyeScoop.com for all kinds of incredible stuff get there first and it is fun it's a great community and it's it's just growing it is literally growing by the day by the hour so thank you to all of you who have joined if you haven't yet hey man christmas present family members for yourself treat yourself and just be good to yourself be good to others get everybody a membership and get yourself another one because tom what's better than one I have been led to believe the answer is two. So that's I'm right. Say two. Yeah. Good job, Tom. So get yourself a second because what if you lose the first one? Think about that. So smart, smart. <laughs> smart. Always be prepared. So thank you all for listening. Have a great weekend. Ha- try to have try to have a good weekend. Watch a little bit of football. Do whatever you need. The weather will you know we'll see. But have fun. Take it easy. We'll talk to you guys on sometime next week. I don't know what day. Tom, do you know what day? <laughs> Tuesday, Monday. I know of seven days. I don't know what day we're doing a podcast next week. I don't want to do 11 again. We'll talk to you guys on someday later next week. Have a good one.